Your hair grow out, ain't you? You'll have a mullet before long, son. God love Parker. Amen. I know that Colorado Springs is about 800 miles from here, isn't it, David? It's about 1,000 miles. David drove here last week from Colorado Springs, went back home, and drove back here to be in church again this weekend. A church alive is worth the drive. That's a long way to go, amen, but I appreciate the commitment, David, amen. If I don't see you next week, it'd be all right, but hey, if I do, appreciate it, amen. Just glad to have you here. That's, that's fantastic, amen. If you have your Bibles, I'm not going to give you a, uh, we're going to start in Proverbs 29. I'm just going to share some of last week, and we're going to go. This is what uh, the Lord has put on my heart, and I feel like it's my assignment. We have had some very dear, wonderful people that have passed on into the heaven. And I mean, I've loved these people, and Pam been with me 25 years, Donna, your mother, who passed on, and, and others who have passed and, and one of the things is, is you start saying, okay, now, Lord, why am I here? Why did you leave me? What is my purpose on this earth? I, I was blessed to sit under uh, a man named Miles Monroe for, I think, four times I was with him for three days of about six to eight hours a day. I bought him his first pair of cowboy boots. And this is a man who had tremendous connections around the world. And he taught me. I felt like every now and then I will sit in a group of people, pastors particularly at a conference, and I feel like I'm the only one there that is particularly me. You ever just felt like the preaching was just for you? Anybody? I mean, it's just like it just hits you, and it's like they reading my mail. Amen. Well, Miles passed a few years ago, and uh, not that I picked up anything as far as his mantle, but I feel like that people need to understand purpose more than anything today. 50,000 people gathered in Houston. I think what I heard is that many people Friday night. And, I, and, you know, and I'm not condemning concerts or anything like that, but eight people were killed. That's not the purpose of God on this planet. Amen. To gather, to be intoxicated, to be stupid. and to. Uh, but there is a pinned up desire to say, God, what am I here for? Why, why have you put me here? And so our, our thought this week is going to be on purpose. It's the reason for being. It's the reason you're here. And the more I study this, the more I realize what a toxic teaching evolution is. It's not just that it's funny that two gases got together and bumped and caused an explosion and, and uh, the earth popped up here over here and the sun popped up over there and the moon was over here. All this caused by this evolutionary thing and then man crawled up as a, uh, a one-celled animal and over millions of years grew legs grew arms <clears throat> crawled up off the shore crawled into a tree had hair all over it and then shaved and fell out of the tree and became a public school teacher uh, I've never believed that that was the will of God for us to learn and yet if you study it that's what they keep laying out I believe this book, this manual, if you will, is 5,000 years of known history. This is all I got to go on. So I stand on this book and all the things that I do, and I'll die standing on this book and believe in this book. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 18 says, where there is no revelation, no vision, no purpose, people cast off restraint. What happened Friday night was people with no vision casting off restraint. And when you cast off restraint, that means uh, when, when, I, uh, when I was a cowboy, don't let the belt buckle fool you, amen. When I was a cowboy, which was a few years back, I remember riding my horse, and if I didn't have restraints on that horse, that horse would do anything he wanted. People need restraint. We need something to kind of hold us back, keep us in check, amen. And when you have no vision, you cast off restraint. But blessed is the one who heeds wisdom and instruction. First Corinthians 9, 26, Paul said, Therefore I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. Again, this was from last week, and many of you may not have been here, and those that are watching online, we just want you to catch up here. So Paul said, I'm not just going to be aimless here. I, I have a reason for what I'm doing. 
uh, Miles Monroe said that without purpose, life is an experiment or a haphazard journey that results in frustration, disappointment, and failure. The absence of purpose, time has no meaning, and energy has no reason. Purpose is, we defined it last week, as the origin or the reason for the existence of a thing, the cause for the creation of a thing, the need that makes a manufacturer produce a specific product. Amen. When you, if I've, I've been in California and I saw the great big redwood trees and I saw that men sawed it with them great big, what, what they call them saws? Crosscut saws back and forth, and, and the, it's laborious to do that to bring it down. And then one guy decided, you know what? If I put a motor on that thing, I could bring this tree down a whole lot faster. And therefore, the chainsaw was created. Amen. It, it had a need for it. It was a purpose to it. So purpose then is the original intent in the mind of the creator that motivated him to create a particular thing. Jeremiah 1.5 says, before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, I had holy plans for you. I believe that God had a plan for us, and we were in the mind of God before he shot us into the womb, and he put us here in this time and for a reason. Now, last week we brought this out. First, that purpose is inherent. Everybody here is born with purpose. There is no non-purpose person. Everybody had purpose. My sister was... Um, was born with a, a cerebral palsy, a, a anamuscular dystrophy, uh, her, but she had a purpose here on this earth. Amen. One of the most loving, sweetest girls you've ever met in your life until you crossed her. Amen. I mean, she was just something special, you know. She passed away a few years ago, e even in a wheelchair. She had purpose. Amen. I love to go and visit her, and I would kidnap her from the assisted living place just to get her out. And you would run her through a Walmart on a, uh, she'd be in a wheelchair or one of them electric chairs. She liked that. And you, she'd throw candy in, and I'd pull candy out. She'd throw candy in, and I'd pull candy out. And it was just a game we played, but she had purpose. Amen. Everybody here has a purpose. She made the best <clears throat> no bake chocolate uh, oatmeal. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Uh, that, that was no bake. Uh, you put them on wax paper. Oh my God, my kids love them. Help me, Lord. Uh, purpose is inherent. So everybody here got it. Amen. Second, purpose is individual. You have an individual purpose about you that God put you here on this earth that only you can fulfill. Even that's why when I walk through a graveyard, I realize that so many people here, did they complete the purpose of God in their life? When I think about the children who had been aborted, I think about, God, you put them here for a reason, and they didn't get to fulfill their purpose. We'll talk more about that later. Amen. Purpose is often multiple. you got more than one purpose. As a man, you're, you should be a, your father, a brother, an uncle, a, a, um, a, a friend, amen, a, a believer in Christ, amen, as a, as a woman, a mother, a, a daughter a wife, a man, a sister. We all have multiple purposes in life that God puts us into. Purpose is interdependent. I can't do this without you. You can't do this without me. We're connected. Just like the moon needs the sun to shine, amen, we need each other to shine, amen, amen. And God put the moon and the sun in such a specific place that the sun would shine on the moon and give us a light, the lesser light, the book of Genesis says, amen, during the night, and the greater light during the day. And he put us just far enough away that we don't freeze, amen. He didn't put us too close that we wouldn't burn up. That's a God thing, don't you say? Amen. And he spends it, and he gave us time. He, he interjected these parentheses known as time. God lives outside of time. He said, a day to him is like a thousand years. Therefore, if you passed away, if somebody passed away 30 years ago, and they've been in heaven for 30 years, and you get there, it'd be like you just got, they, they, hey, you, you just got here five minutes ago. Amen. That's the way time is in heaven. It's not going to be like it is here. But God created time so that we could understand seasons, amen, and go through them and understand days. Thank God for the extra hour last night. Can I get an amen? Amen. I'd like to do that again next Sunday. Man, and purpose is resilient. Once God puts purpose in your life, it's resilient. In other words, that God will put, he'll put a roadblock in your life or he'll set you up in such a way that even if you took a misstep, if you failed, if you backslid, God called you to do something, God will put you back on the road again so you can accomplish your vision and your purpose that he has in your life. And that, to me, is a tremendous thing. Can I get an amen? Because I've been a guy that's made missteps in life, and God put me back on to get me back into my purpose. Why? Because his gifts and callings are without repentance. God didn't repent because he called you or put something in your life to do. Can I get an amen again? 
Amen. So let's keep on walking. Principle, principle. The principles, amen. A principle is an idea that forms the basis of something, a law or fact that explains how something works or why something happens. We use principles like uh, gravity. Gravity, if you, you throw something up, it's going to come down. Amen. Principle. Water finds the lowest place. Let me find that out. I mean, you, throw, you pour water in, it's going to find the lowest place. So here's some principles for you to write down. First, God purposed to save Noah from the flood before he told him to build a boat. So God is a God of purpose, and he's a source of purpose. Amen. Everything about God has purpose in him. Amen. So before Noah built the boat, God said, I'm going to save you. Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, this is the story of Noah. Noah was a good man, a man of integrity in his community. Noah walked with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. As far as God was concerned, the earth had become a sewer. Do you know what happens then? God looked for a way to wipe it out. Why? Because people had lost restraint. They had no vision. They were doing anything they wanted to do. There was violence everywhere. God took one look and saw how bad it was. Everyone corrupt and corrupting. Life itself corrupt to the core. God said to Noah, it's all over. It's the end of the human race. The violence is everywhere. I'm making a clean sweep. Build yourself a ship. In other words, I'm making a clean sweep, but I'm going to keep you. I'm going to keep you, and I'm going to keep your family. You affect your family. Can I get an amen? Amen. Build yourself a ship from teak wood. Make rooms in it. Coat it with pitch inside and out. Make it 450 feet long, 70 feet wide, 45 feet high. I'm talking about this because we had a whole group of our folk go to go see that ark over in Kentucky, and it made a big difference in their life. Build a roof for it. Put a window uh, 18 inches from the top. Put in a door on the side of the ship and make three decks, lower, middle, and upper. I'm going to bring a flood on the earth that will destroy everything alive under the heaven. Total destruction. Let me just say to you at this time, Noah probably had to question God to say, what's the flood? What's the rain? Because up until this time, the rain came up from the ground. It was the dew, like you saw this morning. It came up and it gave water to the vegetation. It had never fallen from the sky. As a matter of fact, let me just throw a, something I can't prove, you can't disprove. Don't you love when I say that? Amen. I'm, I'm, I do it even on social media just to jack with people. At this time, there had never been no rain, so there was this thing called the ozone. God created it. Amen. He had this giant canopy around us. So that giant canopy around us, the, the ultraviolet rays couldn't get to us. So man lived 100, 200, 400, 500, 600, 800 years. He lived a long time on earth. Now, if you think Christmas is difficult, uh, David, for you guys with all them little grandkids, imagine if you lived 700 years. Amen. You wouldn't even know what to name them kids after that time. Amen. So here we see that, that Noah said, what's, what's a flood? A flood's going to come. I'm gonna, in other words, I'm going to collapse the canopy. I'm going to dump it down on top of the earth. Amen, and it's going to flood the earth. But I'm going to establish a covenant with you. You'll board the ship, and your sons, your wife, your sons' wives will come on the board with you. You are also to take two of each living creature, a male and a female, on board to the ship to preserve their lives with you. That had to be an undertaking. Two of every species, a bird, mammal, reptile, two of everything, so as to preserve their lives along with yours. Also, get all the food you'll need and store it up for them. Amen. And Noah did everything God commanded him to do. So the purpose was that God had intended for Noah to live and his family before he sent the flood. By the way, after the flood, you look at it and you read it, man lived 200 years, 150 years, 100 years, down to his average life of 70. You hear me? Amen. Because now the canopy is given away. So for the last 5,000 years, your hairspray has not destroyed the ozone. Amen. Our rocket ships and satellites have not destroyed the ozone. Ain't nothing really changed over 5,000 years. I know, Pastor, I know what you say, but it's been global warming. The earth will always have climate change. The earth is always growing. I'm not disputing with anybody. It's always going to do that. I don't know why the panic. Keep driving your heart rod. Can I get an amen? Amen. He determined a virgin would have a child before the Holy Spirit came over her. This was the purpose of God. In the book of Isaiah 7, 14, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. I'm just going to move very quickly here. Got a lot to cover. But God determined something. Just like he determined you before he put you into a womb. He determined that there would be a virgin that would give birth to a child. This was the purpose of God. When you get to Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was placed 
plans to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Let me give you another principle. Everything in life has purpose. Everything. This brings us to the spider that I walked under the other day. We were in the woods, uh, me and Josiah and Josiah. I have two Josiahs there, my son and, and, uh, and our worship leader, Josiah, both like sons to me. And we were in the woods and walking the other day, and I was heading, heading down to this little campsite. And all of a sudden, I just stopped and backed up and let them go ahead of me. <laughs> you got it? Because wisdom tells me that the first one down the trail is the one that's going to encounter the banana spiders. And all of a sudden, I saw him slapping him, and I thought to myself, I didn't even say a word to him. I just let him go on through. Amen, because I thought, I've been down and say, spiders, spiders. Pastor, you think spiders have a, have a per Absolutely. Amen. Every, let me say it again. Everything in life has a purpose. Every bug, every roach, every ant, every spider, every mosquito, every insect we detest and fear has a purpose. Our reaction to them doesn't negate their purpose. You can get mad, scream, holler, call for, for the pesticide people, but they still got purpose here. Amen. So ignorance of purpose doesn't cancel it. Just because you're ignorant of a purpose or something, it doesn't mean that it doesn't belong here. So no matter how insignificant, there's a distinct purpose. The hair's in your nose. This morning, I, I do my hair, you know, getting ready, and I look like, and I always do this, and I go, ooh. And normally, normally, because I'm such a sissy, I, I shove them back up in my nose. Because to pull them is to cause tears and then and i weep and i cry amen i just it just i don't know what it is but that not that nose hair is connected to something up here in the eye gland amen you pull that thing and it's like oh my goodness that's why some of you elderly folk when i walk by you i say i, I know i'm thinking i like get old that hair you know just just to make you cry but it's there for a purpose god put it there for a purpose it traps bacteria and germs and dust particles amen it cancels out so many things the wax in your ears god put that wax there why does that wax keep building up because your eardrums are so sensitive amen and that wax again it traps bacteria it traps dust it goes in there i know there's an accumulation at times and you've got to get more of it out amen bobby pins are good for that but, but on, on the flip side of all that, amen, they, they, there's a need for it. God made it for a purpose. Every plant was created to protect our ecosystem. The ozone layer was created to filter out and regulate ultraviolet rays, as we mentioned. The plants absorb the ultraviolet rays, which produces chlorophyll for food, releasing oxygen for us to breathe. We, in turn, release carbon dioxide, which plants absorb to make food. Therefore, our purposes are interrelated. Bam! There it is. God put all that together just for us. Again, there ain't no way you can get evolution to do this kind of stuff. Amen. God had this thing in mind. Before God ever started the six days of creation, God had already thought how I'm going to do this thing. Amen. How I'm going to make sure that man lives, how plants are going to live, how animals are going to live. And everything I put here on this earth is going to have a, a, a reason. Now, hear me. Not every purpose is known. Not every purpose is known. The story of Jonah shows when purpose is unknown. You remember Jonah the prophet? Amen. He was a prophet of God. When, when a prophet is told to do something, they would do it. Amen. God spoke to Jonah, told him to go to Nineveh. Nineveh is the capital of Assyria. Jonah did not like Assyria. Listen, long before you had an issue with other races and cultures, other people had issues with races and cultures. Amen. It's always been. It's something we fight. It's nothing you were born with. Somebody taught you how to be that way. Amen. Don't get quiet. Don't, well, you can get quiet. I don't care if you get quiet. I'm not, I ain't going to shut up. So, so here Jonah, he, did, he hated the Assyrians. Amen. Because when the Assyrians attacked the Hebrew people, they'd chop their heads off and leave them as a pyramid at the gate, as gates of the city. And so God says, I want you to go to Nineveh and tell them to repent. If they don't repent, I'm going to destroy them. So what does Jonah do? Sometimes when you hear God say, I'm going to kill the people you don't like, you say, good deal. So Jonah gets, hops a boat, and he heads off to another place. Amen. He's actually headed another way. What he doesn't understand is God is a God of purpose. And God had created a little bit of fish. And he started feeding that fish until that fish got really, 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 really big. And once that fish got really, really big, God knew what Jonah was going to do. So Jonah is in the hull of the ship, and a storm comes up. The Scripture says, amen, when the storm came up, the sailors, now listen, uh, Red at night, sailors delight. Red in the morning, 
Sailors wanted. Every sailor knew. And I'll see people post, isn't this the most wonderful uh, red in the morning? They'll, they'll post that morning picture. Amen. I think you, you Clanton, y'all good at doing that kind of stuff. Y'all post that. And y'all say, ain't that a beautiful morning? Amen. Sunrise. And I'm thinking, uh-uh. It going to rain. Amen. We're going to get drenched. We got a storm coming. Because I've learned that through Scripture. Jesus taught it in Scripture, amen, and the sailors knew it. So a storm come up, and it just came up out of nowhere. So these sailors knew if a storm come up out of nowhere, I I don't know the reason for the storm, amen, and it's throwing the boat left, right, left, right, and they cast these lots, and I don't know exactly how it works. It's kind of like dice or something, but it lands on Jonah, amen. So Jonah has to confess. He's got to say something, and this is what he says. Amen. In chapter 1, verse 9. And again, the thought here is not every purpose is known. They didn't understand the purpose of the storm. So he answered, I'm a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the and dry land. See, the God I serve made the sea. And if he made the sea, he made it to act this way. And right now, the sea is after me. Amen. And I'm in trouble, boys. Amen. So what you've got to do to stop the sea from doing this and destroying this boat is throw me over. Listen to me. You've got to know that you know that you know the purpose of God before you tell a group of people, throw me into the sea. Huh? I ain't letting you throw me in the sea unless I know God's in on this. So he said, throw me in the sea. And so they grab him and they and a one, and a two, and a three, and he throws his butt overboard. Amen. As soon as he hit the water, the Bible says, whoosh, the sea became calm. Wow. What a great thing. They didn't understand the purpose of the storm. The other day, a storm blew through here. And when it was over, we had the most pristine, beautiful weather. But we had to deal with the storm first. Amen. You've got to know that after the storm comes the blessing. Can I get an amen? You've got to endure the storm. You've got to press through the storm. I mean, as soon as Jonah hit the water, it was like, whoosh, Man, look at that. It's clear, calm, and wonderful. But all of a sudden, there was a sound came up behind Jonah. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. And swallowed him. I've read this story so many times. Jonah was in the belly in that well, inside the well. Amen. The scripture called it a well, I think, in the New Testament. Amen. He was there inside the belly. Uh, for 70. One hours and 55 minutes. Pastor, how you know he was in there for 71 hours and 55 minutes? Because the scripture says, as, G- as Jonah was in the belly of the well, Jesus said, so I'll be in the belly of the earth for three days, uh, 72 hours. Well, hang on. You said 71 hours and 55 minutes. I know, because it only took him five minutes to pray his prayer that got him regurgitated. You want to hear what Jonah's prayer was? It's pretty simple. He said, Lord God, forgive me. <laughs> that just pretty much summed it up. Here's what I figured with Jonah. Jonah knew he was coming out of that well either to the front or to the rear. And he decided, I think I'll take the front. So he repented of his sin, and the Bible says that the well threw him up on the dry ground. That's a pretty good little heave. Amen. Chunked him right up onto the dry ground. He went into the Ninevites. And, and again, I'm just going to tell you that, that the purpose wasn't known at the time, but now we know the purpose was to get the Ninevites to repent. And hear me, Jonah never told him to repent. You read the story. He told him, in 40 days, God's going to kill y'all all. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Sometimes folk don't need to be told to repent. They know to repent. People tell me all the time, Pastor, why don't you tell people to repent? Listen, if you're an American, you already know to repent. You've heard enough gospel, amen, you've been involved in this thing long enough, you know to turn, to turn your life around by asking Jesus to forgive you. Can I get an amen? Amen. So Jonah just said, hey, 40 days, God's going to kill every one of y'all. And guess what? They fasted. They prayed. They had the animals fast. And God repented. God, and let, me, when, let me just say, when I, when I use the term God repent, it means that God turned away from what he was going to do. And he didn't destroy them. Now, it upset Jonah, but that's all right. Every now and then, we, we service that God get upset when we think that God ought to do something and he don't do it. Amen. Because God's thoughts are greater than our thoughts. Amen. So the lack of knowledge didn't cancel the storm's purpose. Unknown purpose always, this unknown purpose always wastes time and gives the possibility of danger. 
That's why what I'm teaching you right now, you got to teach your kids. Amen. you got to get it in their heart because if they don't know their purpose in life, it's going to waste their time and it's going to cause danger. Uh, next principle, wherever purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. If you don't know the purpose of something, it's inevitable that it's going to be abused. Abuse and misuse occurs whenever we don't use something according to its creator's intentions. I mentioned a chainsaw a while ago. Honestly, I've only used a chainsaw a couple of times in my life. I've got people around me that are really good with chainsaws, but it's not my favorite tool to use in life. I've seen too much damage with it. I need to practice with it a little bit more. The other day, uh, Sister Cindy and Pat, they had trees down right there in front of their house, and and uh, blocking the driveway, and we went to, to deal with it. And I said, crank it up, I'll use it. And then it hit me. I don't want to use this chainsaw. I said, David, here, you use this thing. I'll tote the limbs. Amen. I'll be, I'll be the man that labors, and you be the man that cuts. Because I understand the purpose of that saw. And if you don't use it properly, it can mess you up. Amen. So it's important to know that. Abuse is abnormal use. Misuse is to miss the intended use. Whether it be a plant, an animal, or a person. If you don't know the purpose of a baby, a child, it causes child abuse. When you don't know the purpose of your spouse, amen, and why God gave you a spouse, it will cause spousal abuse. Amen. It's a misuse of purpose in life. That's why be careful when you get married. Prepare yourself for the marriage, amen, that you don't abuse one another. Amen. This thing is for a long term. Can I get an amen? Amen. Uh, don't, don't get a horse or a dog. Unless you understand the use of a horse or a dog. I just want a puppy. I just want a puppy. Hey, man, next thing you know, you get a 140-pound Rottweiler. If you don't understand the, the, the purpose of that animal, if you ain't the alpha male sister, hey, man, I don't care, male, female, you better be the alpha. Well, so I got a big dog in my house. That dog understands who the alpha is in the house. Hey, man, he does, he doesn't, he's, he's smart and understand. Real quick, I will. Tear you up. Amen. I didn't cut your tail off. I done nipped your ears, boy. I'll do more than that if you keep acting up. Come on. Amen. So you got to know, but you get a horse. I just want a horse. I just want a horse. That's a 30 year investment. Man, y'all going to tell you to feed that horse morning and night, take care of his feet. Amen. Give him shots. Worm that horse. Amen. But I just want a horse. Be careful, parent. Not to be sucked in when that child begins to pull on your heartstrings for a horse. There was a time I took in more horses. I had 11 horses out on the property. After a while, I had to quit telling parents, quit buying your kids horses. Amen. Because they end up here, you got to know the purpose for that animal. Amen. If you don't know the purpose of money, you'll abuse your finances. You'll find yourself in debt. You'll get one of them little credit cards, and next thing you know, you'll never be able to bail yourself out, never be able to give your tithe, never be able to bless other people because now J.C. Penny owns you. Amen. Be careful with your finances. Amen. You, they can abuse you. Don't stay ignorant. Refrain from using until you gain the knowledge to do it properly. I don't care if it's a, a, a person, a, 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 an animal, amen, whatever it is in life, amen, don't, don't you go get it until you're able to handle it properly. Hallelujah. Last point. I'm going to move on here. Simon the Sorcerer. Acts chapter 8, verse 9. Amazing story. Man, when you read the book of Acts, it's so full of action. There's so many great things happening. The church is exploding. Amen. 5,000 get saved. 3,000 get saved. The Holy Spirit's moving on people. People are speaking in other tongues. Miracles are taking place everywhere. Amen. The, the, the church, the, the people are starting to gather and bless one another with things. Amen. It's an amazing story. In Acts chapter 8, now for some time, there was a man named Simon had practiced sorcery. Amen. In the city and amazed all the people of Samaria. He boasted he was someone great. And all the people, both high and low, Democrat and Republican, gave him their attention and explained, this man is rightly called the great power of God. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his sorcery. Do not be bewitched. There is a devil out there. Satanic is real. Amen. Tarot cards. Amen. Reading of the future. Don't be caught. Listen, don't ever call a psychic. Don't ever call a psychic. Amen. I'm just saying to you, people say, yeah, you call a psychic and they ask you, what's your name? Well, you ought to know. It's this witchcraft. It's arrogant. It's prideful. 
He claims to be someone great. The people of Samaria think he's a divine power. Amen. It's the root of idolatry, thinking we can handle God and, and, and do whatever we want with God. Amen. That we can control him with our religious deeds, our prayers, our words. So they follow him in, in him because he had amazed him for a long time. But when they believed Philip, he was this preacher, this evangelist, Philip. Amen. As he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Simon the sorcerer, verse 13, believed and was baptized, and he followed Philip everywhere. Astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. Now, let's stop here real quick. Apostle. An apostle is somebody that has the ability to open and close. They have the ability to gather in and send out. That's apostolic anointing. I know many times we don't talk about this, but the Bible talks about the fivefold ministry. There was the apostles. He touches all the other ministries. There, there is the prophet, the finger pointer, the one that can hit you on the way, running down 2100. Amen. There's the evangelist. He's the longest finger, the outreach. Amen. There's the pastor. He's married to you. You're stuck with him. Amen. And there's the teacher. He helps clean out your ears so you can hear the word of God. Everybody follow that? That's called out of the book of Ephesians. That's the fivefold ministry. This guy here, the apostle. He, he has all, there's a lot of the gifts and callings they have in his life. When I read about Philip, I read an evangelist. I mean, you know, Joseph, I feel like I'm more of a Philip kind of guy. You know, I, I, really, I like reaching people, but I ain't real, let's just be honest. I'm not a really good Holy Ghost kind of guy, am I? You can tell the truth. Did you know I speak in tongues? I've been speaking in tongues for 40 years. I don't do it around y'all. Because it confuses you. Amen. It messes folk up. I've been in too many Pentecostal churches where they sound like a turkey farm going off. Amen. All they want to do is get the new, whoever's new in the house. Who, you know, if, they, if, you, if y'all showed up at a Pentecostal church that I preached in, that, that whole gift would be trying to get you two to the altar with her coming behind you. You see what I'm saying? Amen. You know what I'm saying? So you were Pentecostal? You cut your hair. You're going to hell. All right. You see where I'm going? So, so here, here we are. So, but, but I've always been the Philip guy. I've always been the people lead. But I'll bring in somebody like Pastor Mike or, or Bishop Miller or somebody like that, and it's like the Holy Ghost breaks loose in here. And I say, I'm never jealous of that because it's never been my calling. Amen. It's never been who I am. So i got to be true to who I am. So like Philip, I can win people to Christ. I can baptize them. Amen. I've seen miracles in my life. Amen. I've prayed for miracles. I've seen it. But then there comes a time when, okay, something else going on here. And so they called for the apostles, Peter and John. So here come Peter and John coming down. And when they get down there, whoo, Holy Ghost breaks loose, man. I mean, and you don't see Philip being jealous of it. I, I'm not jealous of it. I just sit back and say, God, I know my purpose. I know my place. I know who I am. Amen. And every now and then I'll bring somebody in here to scare y'all. Amen. Can I get an Amen. Amen. So when, when they arrived, they prayed for the new believers that were there. They might receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on any of them. And they simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. There's that baptizing in the name of the Lord Jesus. You know, when we baptize, we baptize your name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And as the disciples carried forth the commandment in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we baptize you, we baptize you into everything. Amen. Either we're all wrong or we're all right. <laughs> hey, you got time to mess up here. Amen. Then they arrived, they prayed for the new believers there that they would receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. Verse 17. And then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Then Simon saw that the Spirit was given. Something manifested there. Amen. At the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money. What? Simon the sorcerer has already been born again. He's already saved and baptized. And now he's filled with the Holy Ghost, and he offers them money. Woo, boy, we could go a lot of places with this one. I have seen a lot of ministries use their gifts to make money, to uh, deceive the people. You know, I've often said you can shear a sheep a lot, but you can only skin one once. A lot of folk been skint. Amen. That's why they're scared to give because they feel like they've been a misuse uh, of the purpose of God for the finances in the house. Amen. And Peter and John laid hand. Then Simon saw that with spirit. He offered them money. 
he said, and said, give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Here's the principle. Whenever purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. He didn't understand the use of the Holy Ghost. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, amen. The, the need for power and love in someone's life. He saw it as a way to make money, as a, as a side thing. So he wants to buy it. So he wants to abuse the Holy, Holy Ghost. And then Peter, Peter answered, may your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Woo, hold on. I'm, I, got, I got saved. Got baptized, I'm a tongue talker, and my heart ain't right. You hear that? You got to be diligent to take care of your heart, to watch after yourself. Amen. So here at this moment, we realize that there's an issue going on, and Peter rebukes him. But then he says, repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord in the hope that he may forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. Verse 23. I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Now, let me just say this to you. You can get saved, Holy Ghost filled, baptized, and still have bitterness in your heart. You've got to release people who have hurt you, done you wrong, let them go. Don't live captive to them any longer. The purpose of God in your life will never be fulfilled as long as you're the prisoner of somebody else's wrongdoing in your life. Amen. You've got to let it go. Can I get an amen? My God, I hope I preach this good in the next service. <laughs> Stay with me. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Verse 24. Then Simon answered, pray to the Lord for me so that nothing you have said may happen to me. Man, I, 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 I don't want to lose what I got. Uh, God's changed my life. I know what I... I messed up with this thought of buying the Spirit, but I, I know that I can't do that. After they further proclaimed the word of the Lord and testified about Jesus, Peter and John returned to Jerusalem preaching the gospel in many Samaritan villages, Gentile villages there. Simon wanted the gift for the wrong reason, the wrong motive. Simon sought to abuse God's gifts by using them selfishly. Listen. Purpose is powerful. Know your purpose. Stay in your purpose. Work in your purpose. If you want to know the purpose of a thing, if you want to know the purpose of a thing, never ask the thing. If you want to know the purpose of a thing, never ask the thing. Ask the one that created the thing. If you want to know your purpose, quit asking yourself. Start asking God. What is my purpose? Ask the creator why you were created. Amen. Find out. Everything in life has a purpose. Not every purpose is known. Wherever purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. A person or a thing apart from its creator cannot know its purpose. Listen, God purposed the Holy Ghost to power the church. There was a little village and every planting season, they'd go to the barn and they'd wrap ropes around a red tractor that had a plow on it. They'd pull that tractor out. And then they would start the laborious work of taking the rope and dragging that tractor through the field and it was plowing. And they would work all season long dragging that tractor through the field, dragging that tractor. When they got done, they'd plant their seed. This went on for years. An old farmer walked into that same barn and back in an old box. He looked and he saw a manual. And he picked up the manual and he started reading it. And it said that that tractor didn't have to be pulled. It could run on its own sources. It had a purpose. So he stayed up all night and he changed the plugs and he, he poured in oil. He poured in gasoline. And when he told the village that he had found a manual and that that tractor would run, they laughed at him. They said, no, we always pull the tractor. We always pull the tractor. We were made to pull the tractor. We got to make that tractor, pull it, and make it plow. And he said, no, nah, I read something, man, that this tractor has its own power. 
So he worked on it, he worked on it. And all of a sudden, that thing fired up. And then one night, he went out and he plowed that whole field. When all the farmers got up the next day, they found him sleep on the tractor. And they couldn't believe what they just saw. He meant that that little red tractor had plowed that whole field. Matter of fact, the next day, they went and plowed another guy's field. And then another guy's field. And another guy's field. And what used to take them the whole summer to do one field, they plowed everybody's field in a week. All because he read the manual. Why can't the Holy Spirit? I'm just asking. Still work signs and miracles. Why can't thousands of people still get saved? You know, the issue is, is we've been praying for good deeds and works. But what we got to do is lean back on the Holy Ghost and say, Lord, it's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by your spirit. Amen. I believe that not only the fields in Crosby can be plowed, but in Dayton, in Channel View, in Baytown, in Huffman, and we can reach this area. If we just kind of back off just a little bit and say, well, you know what? I can't do this on my own. Amen. You're going to have to take care of this, Lord. You're going to have to do this. Every head bowed, eyes closed just for a brief moment. Lord, I'm asking for your spirit to come upon us. Indwell us. Use us. We need you. Oh, God, we need you. Lord, if ever we needed you, it's now. We need to put our trust in you for an America that's gone to drift. The storms are coming. And we, your people, understand the purpose of them storms that are going to hit this nation. We understand you're bringing America back to you. Lord, the people of America, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'd help us discover our purpose, that we'd begin to ask you, God, and, and just begin to press in and use it for your glory. Not to be jealous of a, of a John or a Peter, but God, remind ourselves, if you called us to be Philip, let's be Philip. If you called us to be John, let's be John. Whatever you called us to be, let us fulfill our purpose in this generation. Amen. Can I ask you one question with your head bowed and your eyes closed and those watching online? If you feel like you have misstepped, can I use the word backslide, been away from God, I'm telling you that it ain't just a detour. God will put you right back on the same track again and use you for his glory. In fact, you put your hand up now and back down just real quick. Thank you. Thank you. I see several hands. Amen. Out of my peripheral and around. Let's pray this together. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Empower my life. Help me discover my purpose. I'm here for a reason. On time. In time. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on. Give God praise in the house. Amen. I don't want to purchase the Spirit's power. Amen. I just want God to say, Lord, I'm your child. Did you know that my kids, boy, I say this to y'all all the time, but it's so true. I remind myself, there ain't nothing I wouldn't do for my kids if they sought my head instead of my hand. If they went after my heart, they're going to get the hand. Amen. I'd bless them in so many ways. Amen. Because I love them like it. God's the same way with you. Whoever favors the Father, the Father he will favor. Amen. Go after the Father. Be his favorite. Be his favorite. In Jesus' name. If I get our servant leaders to come up. <laughs> there are offered envelopes there in front of you. Did you know the purpose that God blessed you with this week in the area of finances is so that you learn to use your finances properly? Amen. You see the envelope? Here you go, bro. You see the envelope there in front of you? Amen. Believe God for your finances. Amen. There's a bucket in my office, guys. I saw a bucket in my office. Thank you, sir. I tell you what, I'll talk while you move to get that bucket very quickly. Hey, there's a slide on there, Mike. It has to do with Thanksgiving in the woods. One of my favorite Thanksgivings that I can recall. Of course, was back home in Alabama seeing my family. But here in Texas, it was going to another church and fixing meals for people that needed a meal. 
to what we're going to do. Is that slide on there, Mike? It should be down there somewhere. Amen. We're going to call it Thanksgiving in the woods. I talked with the staff. I said, what y'all doing? David said, well, I'm staying here. Joseph said, I'm staying. I'm Mary said, I'm staying. I said, well, we're staying too. Amen. So we're going to have uh, an opportunity from 11 to 2, Thanksgiving Day. We have this giant cafeteria. Now, listen, if you've got Thanksgiving plant, go ahead and do your Thanksgiving. You know, don't, don't, you, don't, don't mess with us. Amen. Don't ruin your Thanksgiving thinking somehow that you've got to come out to our place. Amen. That you've got to come out to our place. Amen. You don't have to do that. But if you don't have anything to do on Thanksgiving Day, or if you just want, if you, your Thanksgiving says at 3 o'clock, amen, from 11 to 12, we're going to make basket, uh, uh, food baskets, hot food, amen, and let people pick them up from 11 to 12. And from 12 to 2, we're going to eat Thanksgiving together. We're going to bring that, uh, that potato sack thing that you throw with the, with the, I can't say that. That's just terrible to say. Amen. Just, just throw, that, throw that out there. You know, we're going to do that. We're going to play card games, dominoes. You know, we're going to have that set up in there so people can hang out with us and, and, uh, and be with us. Amen. So we, we're just going to have a festive day. So we're going to be cooking turkeys and, and chickens. We're going, we're going to smoke them and, and uh, um, bake them. And look, if you want a fried turkey and bring it out, help yourself. Bring us a fried turkey. You want a Cajun fries a turkey? Bring us a Cajun fried turkey. Amen. If you want, you, but we're going to do some in-house stuff there, amen, and feed as many people. So we've got to get the announcement out. If you want a meal to go, we want you to call the office out at the ranch and tell us so we can know what it's going. I know Sister Linda's involved over here and getting all the desserts, amen, that if you want to involve, if you want to help with dessert, get with Sister Linda. She got a sign-up sheet, man. You can't, leave. you can't have church. How did they do it in the old, in the New Testament without a sign-up sheet? I don't know how they did it. Amen. We got sign-up sheets, amen, to be used. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a, a good day. So I'm just saying to you, if on Thanksgiving Day you want to come and hang out with us, you're welcome to. Amen. Because that's where we're going to be. So we're going to go. We'll go in the morning. We'll shoot us a deer. And by 11 o'clock, it'll be skin out. And, and I'm prophesying. Believe in God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So as we give today, we're believing God for jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours. Benefits. Sales and, and commission. commission. Checks, Checks in the mail. mail. Gifts and surprises. Finding money. Bills paid off. Settlements. Inheritance. Rebates and returns. Debts demolished, royalties received, favor, success to the kingdom. All right.